Hey everyone, so it's been a while, I've kind of been MIA because I, I moved recently. Now I've actually been able to, you know, reconfigure my workspace, um, uh, get back in my mode of working again. So I'll definitely be getting back to making my regular weekly videos again. Now, uh, before anything, I just want to say thanks so much to everyone who's been supporting my book. It's available on Amazon for those who don't know yet. And uh, yeah, it's my first art instruction book. And... Um, you know, I really, really, really appreciate the support. I've been getting some really good feedback on Amazon. I thank everyone who took the time to go on there and just said how they felt about it. I really appreciate it. And for those who haven't left a comment yet, I'm asking if you could take the time. Just It doesn't have to be anything lengthy or you know elaborate or whatever. Just just give some honest feedback, you know, how you feel about it. Um, what you like, what you don't like, what you think I could improve, stuff like that. You know, um, I'm thinking of doing a series on pen and ink as well. Um, on approaching different subjects, but I think my next book will definitely be one on drawing basics, for drawing fundamentals, and there's a concept that I use for my own process, and I think that's the approach I'm going to be sharing. It's not going to be a typical, you know, how to draw for beginners. It's going to be concept principle based, and there, there are just three essential principles that I, I, um, I use, and that all my drawing technique and process and philosophy stems from, and I will share that in the book. So thanks so much for supporting the book. And, of course, I'll leave the information um, to get it in the description. And, um, you know, just go on Amazon and just search for Alfonso Dunn. Okay, I'm sure it will pop up. Um, I think it's also available on, on uh, Barnes & Noble's website. And I'll definitely be doing some more work on making it more available in different formats so it's more accessible for different people. Okay? So thanks so much for the support, everyone. I really appreciate it. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to do a ink and watercolor depiction of a uh, kingfisher. Now, um, they're known to have these little uh, light blue um, specks of color in their uh, in their feathers. It's actually a dark blue, and on top you see these little light blue highlights. Now, of course, you know in watercolor you should always experiment with different ways of doing it. You could actually leave the white and then paint it over afterwards, or a little cool little technique is to use uh, masking fluid. And masking fluid is basically uh, a substance that allows you to um, leave spots of the paper untouched. And then you can paint over it. So it's basically a, like a water resistant type of material, which is pretty useful because it's easy to erase. See, I'm just using the, uh, the end of the, the watercolor brush here. And what happens is, um, as these few dots are dried, you can paint over it and then erase it and, you know, like use something soft like a gum eraser and pick those little things off the paper and then you'll see the, you know, specks of, of white from the paper that will show through the painting. And then you can actually leave that as is or you can paint over it to add some color to it. That will be contrast to the color that you laid down before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to paint over it and I'm going to lift it up so you can actually see how the, the effects that it creates. Okay, so now it's dry. I'm just going to paint over it. I'm going to use a really deep color. It's an ultramarine blue. Let's see? So after you paint over this, you'll be able to lift that color. Now, all I'm doing is just using this gum eraser and just lightly. It removes pretty easily. And there you have it. <laughs> See that? Leaves some pretty cool effects. So let's go over some of the materials that I actually use. Now, I have three brushes. I usually end up using only one, really. Um, as I mentioned in other videos, if you have one uh, medium-sized brush, it's pretty much all you need. But I have a smaller one just in case I need to have some details. And I have a larger one in case I need to fill in large areas of, of color you know, in a relatively short amount of time. But I usually end up using just one. You know, this is really a small brush, but it's like a medium for me considering that this is a small drawing painting, okay? Um, here I have my little container of water. This one is just for wetting the brush or actually wetting the paper. And this is one I use for rinsing colors, okay? Um, I always have a piece of um, paper towel that I use for uh, like dabbing the brush, soaking out some of the water or removing some of the pigment. And I always have a piece of paper that I use just to test colors and see how they look, you know? Something really cheap. This is just copy paper, okay? Um, as usual, I'm going to start in with this pretty light and then build up 
the colors because the cool thing about watercolor is that it dries lighter than it applies all right so if you put a color down gradually eventually when it dries it's going to be lighter and it allows you to be able to add different layers and try to be patient as i always told you don't rush it you know watercolor should be given its, its chance to develop and, and and gradually and have layers go on top of layers and, and so on you know be okay with having colors overlap and and be okay with the abstract shapes of watercolor like when you lay things down don't try to shape it too specifically or being too accurate with the shape of um of colors and so on just let them run a little bit you know you're, you're more like with watercolor you have to um let the personality of the paint show through you know don't try to emulate oil with watercolor let watercolor be watercolor you know and that's a cool thing about it it is you can have control but it looks best when you don't exercise too much control more like be a facilitator and not a dictator with watercolor okay Okay, so I think that's about it for the watercolor. Um, I tried not to overwork it in some places, and in some places I think I did. Okay, now that's something, it's, it's almost inevitable, and it's always going to happen. Now, the thing is, though, is that it works in what gives watercolor its unique aesthetic appeal. You know, that the, the color seems to be uh, under control to a certain extent, but to a certain extent it's like it's just you know spontaneous so you have to just let it let go and let the watercolor do its thing all right so um i'm not going to pretty much be too fixed see i'm, I'm being a little bit loose with the uh with the ink so i'm not trying to trap this the watercolor inside see i'm not being too exact in certain areas i'll slow it up a little bit in other areas i'll just See, I'm loosening up the, the contours. I'm not making everything be contained. And it's fine to do that. And see, and also, this makes it a little bit, you know, playful. And I think, you know, if you really want to get a handle on watercolor, you have to get comfortable with the idea that you have to loosen up. See what I'm doing here? Okay, and I think that's about it. So, you know, as I said, with watercolor, you know, it's a, it's not a medium that I think you get the best out of by controlling it too much. You know, let it be loose, be playful, you know, uh, let it kind of guide you as you're guiding it. It's, it's really a process of balance. You have to have some control, but not too much, you know, and uh, you'll get the best out of it in that way. And you'll have the most fun. At the end of the day, this should be about fun. You should be enjoying what you're doing. Okay, okay so thanks everyone for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, 
learned something or was just inspired, feel free to give it a thumbs up below. And also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.